Janova, you missed, yeah, you missed uh, the end of Revengeance, but I am starting a Bionic Commando. Um, <clears throat> the Senator fight took about, about an hour. It, it did not go very well. <laughs> I mean, it went fine. I beat him, but like it was, it was not smooth sailing. I couldn't remember some of the, like, basic rules of how defense is supposed to work. It took me a while to realize you can use your, uh, um, the iframes of the, uh, the, uh, like, hop slash to avoid most of his attacks. Anyway, time to dig into this masterpiece. No, he did not go quietly into the night. By the way, please let me know how the sound is, because I'm trying something a little different than normal today. Also, did the sound just go out for a few seconds? I'm playing in full screen I'll today. Tell you about the man I met when I was still young. Ten years ago, the country faced the greatest threat it had ever known. The FSA was attacked by the Imperials, a military group of fascists who respected nothing. Those tiny nothing subtitles. The laws of life and death. A soldier was sent in and managed to stop them. He saved us all. He saved me. But people forget. At first, the public was grateful. Then they grew distrustful. Before long, they turned on people like you. Mechanically enhanced soldiers. Bionic commandos. They called them dangerous, crazy, not fully human. Bionics became a public menace. Eventually, the politicians pulled the plug. Bionic soldiers were purged, stripped of their bionic parts like they were machines. Some of them died, others ran. Everything froze for a second. Okay, yeah, so I still have to keep this window active or things freeze. I had sent him to kill, sentenced to death, and ready for the end. This is where our story begins. Yeah, seriously, what are the point of these what's the point of these subtitles? Growing pains of the HD era, I suppose. Oh, that's uh that airplane, the grin on that airplane was the grin logo, the developer of the game. Let him go. Using the retro costume for this, of course. I stopped the execution. You put me in prison in the first place. I followed your orders. I got you out. What the hell do you want with me? Probionic terrorists <laughs> detonated a weapon of mass destruction in Ascension City this morning. People are dead, Spencer. Hundreds of thousands. Maybe millions. What's left of the city has been occupied. Infantry, air force, nothing we've sent in has come back out. We need to get behind their lines and find out what's going on. I'm not a soldier of the FSA anymore. We believe the terrorists to be ex-Imperials and some of our own men. Rogue Bionics. You're the only one with experience tackling both. We're sending you into the city to scout the area and help us track down those responsible. Like you are. I guess with the Switch, it's a unique challenge with subtitles because you got to design them to work on a tiny screen and a big screen. I don't know. It seems like it would scale. But 
But I guess things get blurry because the, the resolution drops when you play in portable. Selection of hot dogs. It was a problem on the Vita too. Huh, I don't remember. I guess I didn't play a lot of text heavy games on the Vita though. Mostly indies. Indie action games. <laughs> yeah. Launch delivery. My <laughs> So glad to see quote it. Package delivered. Heading home. So this game stars Mike Patton of Faith No More as the voice of Nathan Rad Spencer. It's an odd decision. I don't know what was going on with him at this time, but he was my childhood hero. Where did the rest of me land? My brother was obsessed with Faith No More when I was young and impressionable, and that meant I was obsessed with Faith No More when I was young and impressionable. And, um,. God, we just grew up listening to all their stuff and listening to Mr. Bungle. The guy is nuts. Uh, but I never thought I'd see him in a Capcom game. And it's it's a weird pick because he doesn't strike me as a very serious person. And even in this role, it sounds like he's... He just sounds like he's always making fun of whatever he's doing. You know, like it's all a big joke to him. And I feel like that's still that's true here as well. Yeah, for real. Yeah, we were huge Faith and Warren, Mr. Bungle fans. I still am. But that was like, um, like a huge part of my childhood. Uh, and finally got to see Faith No More live in 2015 when they had their uh, reunion tour. I never thought I was gonna have that chance, you know, because they broke up in 1998. Uh, and that was, that was, and I didn't, like, you know, when they had the reunion tour, it was like, okay, tickets are going to sell out in five seconds. I didn't even try, you know. <laughs> but uh, a guy I worked with had happened to have a couple extra tickets for some reason. So he took me and uh, another co-worker. It was a fantastic night. Check the settings real quick. Oh, you can't do all the graphic stuff mid game. You ever listen to any Mike Patton stuff? He has like a million side projects too. I mean, I guess they're not really. <laughs> they're not really side projects. Like, I've been calling them side projects since 1998, you know? <laughs> like, the Faith and War didn't even exist for most of that time, so. But he's been he's been very active consistently. He's also in the darkness, which I have not played. Where am I going here? Who has my precious? Looking for my robot arm, a, a mere utility which I'm not attracted to in any way. Ooh. 
negative. Just wondering how that... Like, how did Capcom connect with Mike Patton? I wish there could have been a fly on the wall for that. I think I joined the company at the wrong time. Very nice. Let's look at Armless Spencer for a minute here. That's pretty fun. Not every day you see a action hero in a game with one arm. That scream right there is the most they justify the Mike Patton casting, I think. It's one thing he, you can count on him for. It's horrendous, guttural screaming noises. Emily? Your bionic arm can reach and attach to a surface if the attach reticle turns blue. Jump and attach to the green beam. Swing back and forth three times without releasing. I'm actually surprised this frame rate's stuttering a little bit. Oh, I should probably listen to the directions. Let's get you swinging. Release when you're at the optimal swing angle, marked by the blue swing indicator. Your momentum will launch you forward. Good work. You gather speed by pushing forwards or backwards while swinging. If you do it right, you'll travel further. With you hate to say it, but you always remember when he started. When he, you always remember Mike Patton singing. I started a joke in Brazil, at Rock and Rio. Oh yeah, there. <laughs> see. That's the thing is, I think that um, it's like a band of smartasses, and they I think that they they had a, a huge heavy metal following, and they loved making fun of it. If you're gonna get anywhere, um, so they would occasionally do these ridiculous together. covers of like Swing. easy listening songs. Oh yeah, and he's fluent in Portuguese, right? I think he lives in Portugal. I feel like I heard that. The leap up is a great maneuver. So this was a dirty version of I started a joke. Stay clear of irradiated areas. If you get a radiation warning, get out of there on the double. Also, ah, the radiation. Can't this is the worst part of the game. Surfaces. Green waypoints on the heads up display. Show At least I can see it objective. though. Shit. 
Yeah, he's like the most smart-ass celebrity I, I've ever seen. But he's also probably some form of genius. Your iron boots aren't just for kicks. They also break falls that would otherwise be deadly. The bionic arm will grapple any suitable surface if you keep holding down attach. They had another they did a cover of Easy by the Commodores. And uh, this guy's in love with you by Burt Bacharach. Like they would do these <laughs> easy listening songs from the 70s just to like take the piss out of their metal audience. You know, everyone would be chanting for them to play War Pigs by uh, what's his face? Was Ozzy Osbourne's band again? I'm drawing a blank here. Yeah, the official video, which I think was made in Australia or something, or New Zealand. Which doesn't have the band in it. It's got some weird looking dude. Oh yeah, Martin, he's the, yeah, he, he became like a big star, right? I forgot it. So maybe, was it made in England then? For some reason I thought it wasn't. Uh, wait, I should have watched that tutorial. <laughs> oh, here we go. Love the death from above move. Oops. What am I doing wrong here? It was filmed after the band broke up? That I didn't know. English actors and actors. Okay, yeah, okay. Makes sense. I don't know why I didn't think it was England. Oh, that's weird. Why did they. Why did they proceed with the video if the band was broken up? I guess the record company still had an album to market. I don't even remember what album that's from though. When did, oh, too slow. What the bloody hell? This is a bug. Hit Y, and then hit B. Huh, I think that was a bug. One well, of my controllers busted. Um, yeah. Oh, whoops. I didn't mean to exit the whole thing. Uh, that's... Oh, if that's from King for a Day, that must be the international version. That that song is not on the American version. Must have been a bonus or a B-side or something. Yeah, you know, Faith No More is interesting. I th they've, they've never had... They've never become, like, a mainstream name in America. You know, they have one song, Epic, that's that still gets radio play. I think that's probably the only song by them I've ever heard on the radio. 
but if you ask anyone who's like into rock beyond like a uh, casual passing interest they probably have a very high opinion of faith no more and if you like if you ask anyone who's into metal they almost certainly do uh, I'm not into metal really and I, f I feel like they kind of transcend genres you know they seemed eager not to be pigeonholed as like genre artists like King for a Day in particular that album is all over the map they've got a gospel song on there they've got like a jazzy number they've got like two, actually two jazzy numbers So yeah, the music video was filmed five months after the band's disso dissolution in 98. Huh. Never heard that. What am I, what am I supposed to do here again? So I actually played this part last night. Oh wait, is there more here? Ah, yes. Beautiful. Hey, NVIDIA! They made my graphics card. Nope. I really feel they didn't get enough credit for the great job they did with the swing mechanics in this game. The two, okay, so the two worst things about this game are the radiation and the collectibles uh, because you have to get them all on one playthrough. They don't carry over. Um, and in a game that actively discourages exploration by killing you with radiation, it's it's like a it's just a terrible combination. The genre of my music is a problem for the guy that puts my CDs on the shelves, not mine. Yeah, um... I feel like that was kind of their mentality. And in particular, so like... If we get really geeky with the Faith No More, I'm just admiring this lighting. If we get really geeky with the Faith No More lore... So when Mike Patton joined the band, the guitarist was Jim Martin. And I think that they had a lot of conflict over creative differences, and finally they they basically ended up kicking Jim Martin out of the band. But I feel like he was sort of like the... Shit. He made it have that really metal sound. Um, and I'm, this is all just me speculating, but I always thought maybe they wanted to be more like experimental and weird. And he was like more conventional, like a more conventional metal guitarist. And he was an awesome guitarist, but uh, I think they just, you know, Mike Patton kept being weird, and it probably like, like annoyed him or something. And uh, they ended up going the weird route in the end. <laughs> but then you hear his other side projects, and Faith No More sounds like super conventional <laughs> by comparison. Yeah, this game has some pretty beautiful, like, environment design.
does suck when you can't find something to grapple to. You know, it's it's fun to get those things when you see them, but like, tr you have to get every single one in the game on one playthrough to get any reward for it. So it's like. Kind of unfortunate. One th one thing I like about this game is how, ca like, uh, I don't know describe it like casual the shooting feels. Like, people hate the word arcadey, but like, it's got that sort of lightweight feel to it, where y it's not about like precision aiming. Like, there there's like a pretty generous aim assist. You're supposed to be on the move the whole time. So like, the shooting is, you're supposed to be doing most of your shooting while like in midair, or like, f yeah, like falling from someplace. And I like the feel of that. Hey, Seven Pains. Best swinging action pre-newest Spider-Man game? You know, uh, I think you could make a case for that. I think it very well might be. They did a great job with Spider-Man. I need—I still need to finish that. I got to like, I got super close to the end and then I just, well then I moved cross country <laughs> and uh, never, never picked it back up. I'm trying to figure out, uh, I just have to do like a super swing here. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. I might have a controller malfunctioning. There we go. I mean, I've already missed several. Because <laughs> there were four in the tutorial. I can't believe they did it that way. It's so bizarre. You made a you made a list of grappling hook... Oh, by the way, I looked up that one you mentioned. Rena? Grapple... I, I forget the name again. Grappler or something, Rena. But uh, that's... um. It's the uh, Freedom Planet devs. It's funny because I, I watched the trailer and I immediately thought of Freedom Planet. Uh, and I couldn't pinpoint why. And then I, I looked them up and it's the same tab, sure enough. Oh god! No! Oh, my life! So what else you got on the list? There's a lot. But I, I feel like Bionic Commando was the first to, I don't know, it's certainly the first I ever heard of. I won't say it's the first game to do it. It might be the first game to do it well though. Grapple Force Rena, yeah, yeah, yeah. Flint Hook, that's, uh, that's the, uh... The guys who just released the game, right? Uh, something, a uh, Panzer Paladin, same dev. Chain Dive, we were talking about the other day. It's a great one. I guess you need to unlock the moves even though they teach you in a tutorial up front. Can't seem to do death from above. Some long winded thing, not reading it. Let's 
Let's see. Spider-Man on Atari beats Bionic Commando as the first. Is it any good? Do you read me? And anything pre-NES is kind of hard for me to... Yeah, I'm... I, I kind of feel that way, too. Except I liked uh, Pitfall on the uh, Atari. that your Bionics are extremely sensitive to radiation. Now get on with the mission and see what's out there. I always wondered if that's because the NES was my first system, or if if it is like a quality thing. Like, does everyone feel that way about the system that was their first? Is that, is that a monorail car? Ooh, rip it good. I wonder if there's a mod to make the collectibles work differently. Rip. Spider-Man's alright for an Atari game. But I mean, Bionic Commando is a freaking masterpiece. I think, I think that game holds up really well. Okay, where am I going? This game have a map. Oops. No objectives. Keep moving is a completed objective. <laughs> you can deal with Atari games most of the time, but you have trouble with the ZX Spectrum. Man, I don't, I don't think I've even played that one. See, it's weird. Like, it's sort of visible. It's just a really weird way to block the player onto the critical path. British microcomputers, something else I can't enjoy. I bet the hardware looks kind of cool though. Is this where I came from? I feel like it is. Oh wait, did I see a waypoint? Ah, yes. Go down here, wait. No more waypoint. No, it's not that way. Ah. Huh. Let's see, Flint Hook was made by Tribute Games that made the awesome Panzer Paladin release. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Um, I heard that the reviews are not all that good. I think it's kind of mixed, which gets back to what I was saying yesterday about how I think we're oh shit going to die horribly. I think I think we're seeing more mixed reviews in general as uh, games get bigger and more popular. Radiation. You never mentioned that in the briefing. Remember that your bionics are extremely sensitive to radiation. It looks cool though. I didn't know there was a grappling mechanic. There's also um, so grappling hook games. There's Energy Hook, which was made. It's an indie game by the guy who designed the swinging mechanics uh, in Spider-Man 2, the op the first open world one. Oh, I need to go up here. My readings indicate that something is blocking your only way. 
Oh man, it didn't even save the one I got. You know, screw the collectibles. Oh, I'm supposed to. Am I supposed to go up? Oh, through here. Wait, is that a. Nope, not a hole in the wall. I remember there occasionally being some tricky navigating. We're, like, it's a little unclear where you're supposed to go. Oh, 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 there, that subway car is blocking a hole in the wall. I knew, I have like fumes of memory from like 2011 or whenever I last played this. Wasn't looking closely enough. You know how this goes, Spencer. We're updating the navigation points on your heads up display in real time. Following Slanty. that point, we'll always keep you on the right track. I think the game that gives Planet Commando a run for its money is Umehara Kawase. Yeah, I keep... Umihara. I keep hearing that is really good. I have not played that one. It keeps going, right? It's a, it's a whole series? Umehara is the uh, Street Fighter player. And the lovely man. Aren't there? Oh man, there is a dodge button. Cool. Uh, hello. We're having trouble tracking your position. Enemy jamming signal is blocking the homing device we placed on you. See if you can find the relays emitting that signal and shut them off. Then we'll be able to triangulate your position. And why would I want you to do that? Because we'll be able to resupply you through insertion pods of new weapons. I can live with that. Good. We got a fix on the closest relay. Follow the navigation point. Why don't you make me? Super Joe? Yeah, we go way back. We've been rubbing elbows since he was pretty good Joe. great. I like a game that has a unique diving animation when you walk off something. a ledge. I think it was the name of a terrorist organization. It said Bio Rain. It's just as we expected. It's the ah. Bio Rain Militia. I'll prepare a file on it. You'll have it shortly. Monorail, monorail, monorail. Don't get reckless. The enemy might be on you. <laughs> No. Well, this is very disappointing. So much for my plans of dropping a monorail car on him. Why would they place that in a, a position where it's so hard to actually uh, pull it down? Five or six Umihara Kawase games on Steam right now. Holy crap. Some 
pixely photo backgrounds. And we, oh yeah, I remember seeing shots of that. So what do you? What's it like? Puzzly platformer. Reminds you of an indie game. Yeah, that's kind of the vibe I got. Oh. I should have gotten Mike Patton to do the end theme for the game. Oh, I should have known. <laughs> it's so stupid. Like why design why design these patches of environment that just kill you? You know what I mean about this thing? I like, I, think it was the name of the I don't know where they expect you to be to pull it down. Maybe it does. Maybe not supposed to. It's the bio rain militia. I'll prepare a file on it. You'll have it shortly. Don't get reckless. The enemy might be on you. <laughs> Death pits, but you can see the bottom. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. It's it's like I feel like it just breaks some basic rule of like the last 30 years of uh, environmental design. Central network. Maybe you can shut them down by hacking the enemy's relays. Ow. Ow. Spencer, listen up. Secretary of Defense Armstrong is calling the shots on this mission. Well, this game also has an Armstrong. Try to be polite, okay? And he's also a corrupt politician. Weird. How do you... Ah. Weird. Throw the... How do you throw grenades? Why did the tutorial not cover grenades? Which you have from the beginning. But it did cover every move you get in the entire game. <laughs> That's weird. How do you throw... Is it a bug? Loose copy of Umihara for the Sufami goes for around 80 bucks. I mean, retro game prices are getting ridiculous. I think we were talking about that the other day. Go for that death from above move. I think uh, I think the grenades are bugged. I don't know what you're supposed to do.
I wonder if uh, the original Mihara Kawase is on uh, PSN in Japan. Uh, I mean, the PS2 era, are you talking about prices going up? It's happening now. Weren't we just talking about that? Like, PS2 prices have skyrocketed. Blood Will Tell is now like three to four hundred dollars. Okay, here we go. Now all these. Hey, you know the serve bot. Gotta get a screenshot of that. So rude. Don't expect to jump straight back into the old days. Certain moves and techniques. What's up, Ross Sathi? Just give him some time. We're swinging and shooting over here and getting lost. Relay. Gah. Gotta lose the heat. no one even knows for sure how big it is exactly because of regional differences. Oh, the PS2 library? Yeah, it's humongous. It's humongous in any region. And it was PES... PES 2014 was... Oh, Pro Evolution Soccer. That was the last PS2 game, really? Holy crap. I thought the last PS2 game was like... 2008. <laughs> no, I didn't, but I, I thought it was well before 2014. Look at this cool environment in those floating mines. Like, it all comes together to form a rich tapestry. Yeah, I mean, it figures that it would be a sport game. A lot of people only play soccer games. It's like they just get the new one every year and that's it. Man, I really want the death from above move. That's where the game really opens up. Ah, shoot. Um, stream is mislabeled, huh? 
See, see if I can fix that. Okay, edited. See if that takes. Sometimes it seems like it doesn't take. Thanks for pointing that out. I meant to do that earlier. It's just the Mario butt stomp. Yeah, but see, in this one, instead of bouncing, there's a satisfying slam. I mean, I think this is one of the better looking, like, apocalyptic environments in games. Certainly from around this time. Uh, okay, let's pot up there. Radiation everywhere. Some of it visible. Alienware. I feel like this is the kind of game that really could have benefited from a sequel because the core mechanics are great. It just needs it just needs some refinement, you know. I like that your pistol doesn't need to reload ever. Just like in the original. So what I'm saying is it, in a subtle way, it actually does feel quite a bit like the original game. It's more like it doesn't not feel like the original game, which is itself a feat. Yeah, no David Hater here, I don't think, but it does have uh, Steve Blum, Bloom, along with every other game. He's in pretty much every game ever. Sweet. Oh, s disc swapping is. Yeah, I feel like that's. Uh, that should only ever be used as like a short term uh, solution because it can mess with your your disk drive which you know those things are already um, prone to failure you know as the year as as they get on in their years oh yeah this it's a pretty cool way to introduce the move I'm in the middle of something, Secretary. Maybe you could ask Joe. All your fellow citizens are dead. See, they're trying to paint Super Joe as a government sellout. He's lost his soul. Now he's just regular, not regular Joe. Now he's just like not not Super Joe. Not even pretty good Joe.
How about that headshot? Yeah, this series did have an arcade game, and it's quite different. And I don't think it's nearly as good. But I respect that Capcom took the strategy back then. Um, where, uh, you know, instead of just trying to port things or, like, recreate the experience of their arcade games on the NES, they would do something that played to the strengths of the NES. Which were which lay in a completely different area, you know, being being able to come back to a game, whether it was through battery save or passwords, you know, it meant that they could do like deeper experiences where you like upgrade your character and stuff. And um, they did it with this. They did it with uh, Strider. I actually greatly prefer the NES Strider to the arcade and Genesis one. And, you know, every couple of years, I ask myself if I'm crazy <laughs> for thinking that. And I, go, and I revisit both games, and I always come back to the same conclusion. I'm like, you know, S S Arcade Strider is obviously has better art and, like, is, you know, technologically superior. But it's hard as balls in a way that feels completely unfair a lot of the time. Okay, there's definitely something wrong with the weapons. I think I read something like that too. I'm going to need to solve that issue at some point because I can't fire with anything but the pistol. Um... Same case as Ninja Gaiden, Rygar, yeah, there's a bunch. Um, Willow also, there was an NES game and a completely different arcade game. And then, yeah, the Genesis was, like, the Genesis was uh, sort of an arcade porting machine, just like the Genesis, or the Saturn after it. Um, so I guess it made sense to be like, look, Look at what we can do on a home console now. It's like nearly identical to the arcade strider. Oh shit. Okay, now I'm in trouble. Watch me survive this. Nice. I love that. That kind of, like, where you kind of have to get creative sometimes to survive. Yeah, Willow on NES is really good. And the music's great. We we streamed that once at Capcom and had a ton of fun with it. There's a there's a highlight reel from that stream that's still on their YouTube channel, and it's just like a smash cut of all the funniest moments. But like, yeah, that was a ton of fun. Really good game. But at some point, I definitely intend to stream a playthrough of the NES Strider. Um, one of my personal favorites. I don't, you know, I don't think that it's deserving of, you know, I don't think it's one of the best games ever. But uh, I think that it's got a lot of interesting ideas, and it doesn't get as much uh, praise as I think it as it deserves. But it does feel like an unfinished game sometimes. Up. Uh, 
Oh god. Got him. Here's a different take about Bionic Commando 2009. Micronics ports. Wait, what are the Micronics ports? This is where a grenade or a shotgun would really come in handy. <laughs> no. There we go. Hey Spencer, I knew you were the right man for the job. Maybe it would have been more successful as a 3D puzzle game instead of an action game. Ah. Uh. Oh, like Ghosts and Goblins in 1942, reported by... Was Micronics the developer? Never heard of that. Uh, so you're saying if they had uh, if they had f focused more on environmental puzzle solving and less on the combat? Yeah, maybe. I I mean I like the combat. I I like the like how much mobility factors in. Like that moment where I ran out of bullets, so I had to like reposition to high ground so that I could do the death from above and then grab the ammo that the guy dropped to shoot the last guy. That felt like a very dynamic sequence. Anything going on in this bank? <laughs> oh, it's irradiated. Got it. What if there was a spin-off puzzle game where you solve 3D... Those 3D box puzzles. I mean, I do. I feel like the original we have a new is is more an FSA recon plane was shot down is sort of like a platforming, we like a pla a puzzle platformer. Head to these coordinates and find it. No, but you know, at the time, I think they felt like they had to make shooters. Why am I not surprised, Joe? If they wanted to succeed in the West, it had to it had to Enemy look snipers. and feel like popular Western uh, third-person shooters. Look for their laser and stay at a What's happening? Ah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You can't swim. They're swinging for two. I like seamlessly going into these buildings from the outside. Oh, you're talking about the... <laughs> A spin-off where they just where it was just those three D puzzles from the hacking mini game. Yeah. Hard pass on that. <laughs> and Jono Bay, you say you think that they should have gotten rid of the shooting altogether? I'd be curious to see it. I enjoy the 
casualness of the shooting in this, but uh, the swinging is certainly the main star, so I'd be curious to see it. Yeah, if like if they focus more on the arm having different ways to like using the arms in different ways as his only weapon, that would be cool. That's like how like I've been longing for a new jet set radio for years and years, but uh, I feel like there's a lot they could do that has not been done. And I'm afraid that all these imitators aren't, like, trying to innovate. They just want to, like, make another Jet Set Radio. And there's, like, so much more you could do. Like, use, like just, like, giving you unlock unlockable moves that, like, enhance your mobility. Give you new mobility options and, like, uh, make the combat a lot more interesting. Like, you should be able to do a lot more with the paint. You know, like fun ways of using the paint uh, to like like all the attacking should be skating and painting but there should be special moves that you unlock kind of like in a more traditional third person action game uh, but that also are like fun where you're like painting the enemies to like embarrass them uh, and you know, like the controls in those games left a lot to be desired. Like you didn't feel as cool as you looked. I just feel like they could do so much. Jet Set Splatoon. Yeah, I wonder if Splatoon kind of scratches that itch. I haven't played it. Yeah, there is a new. There's a new game. Uh, I keep forgetting the name. It has funk in the name. Yeah, well, actually, you could design your own cr graffiti in the original Jet Set Radio games. Not in real time, but, uh... You could, like, make your own elaborate pixel art, and then that would be your tags. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Splatoon's another one of those games that I thought looked really cool, but like, um, I just uh, I'm not compelled by competitive gaming. So if that's like the main draw. Probably not gonna. Probably not gonna grab me. Ugh. Crap. Another pod is in the air, homed in at your current position. You like this one? The pod. Yeah. <laughs> Can't take his gun. Shit.
I think if I had a bunch of friends that were into Splatoon, or really any competitive game, that would make a big difference. But like when you're just in a big pool with a bunch of people who play the game all the time, I feel like I'm just bound to lose. Tell you the button layout. this thing. That's weird. It doesn't... Uh, oh, you know, it might be... Yeah, it's, I, my controller is messed up. Well, I've never seen it visualized that way. The trigger is messed up. So maybe that's the problem. How do I get out of here? Oh, derp. I should probably read. Is So I heard Salmon Rush is like, you have to play at sp specific times that are preset. Ah, uh, yeah, it's a trigger issue here. I'm gonna. Hmm. Yeah, let me uh, let me set up the other controller. This this won't stand. Crap! I need another. And it's my PS4 controller. It's just, it's just old and rickety. Um, but I just, because this game doesn't have a windowed mode for some reason, I can't like set up controllers and shit while I'm playing and streaming. So I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna have to make do with the messed up trigger for now.
Okay, you just have to push it really firm. This has been plaguing me for years. I have another one, but I just always forget it's an issue. Isn't someone trying to kill me? Oh, yeah, yeah. Shotgun is pretty OP in this game. In the multiplayer, it basically doesn't degrade in strength over any distance <laughs> or accuracy. So it's like a one-shot kill from anywhere in the map. <laughs> Why is the radiation here? What the what's the point of that? Where's my dude? You know, screw him. PSP currently waiting for the new button sensor thingies because we have the same problem. Yeah, these things, they, uh, they degrade. I also have a terrible habit of dropping my PS4 controllers like every day for some reason. <laughs> Did your PSP have this swollen battery problem that's been popping up lately? Mine did. I have two PSPs and they were both dead and had swollen batteries. Oh, I see. It's letting me toggle. Oh! Let's see what's happening here. Being flanked. Whoa! Um, if you haven't played your PSP in a while, check out the battery, because they're they're reaching their the end of their lifespans, and when that happens, they get swollen and don't work and can be a fire hazard. I think so. Make sure your battery's good. Uh, mine was so bad it was it was it had actually pried the the battery cap off the PSP. It was like wrenching it off. You see that? One shot from all the way back here. <laughs> Could not have gone worse. Yeah, I had two. I had two PSPs. Uh, I had the 1000 and the 3000, and they were both affected. Um, whack. <laughs> yeah, because the shotgun, like I'm saying, I don't, it feels like the you still get the wide shot. And it doesn't degrade in uh, accuracy over space, really.
Okay. Need to figure out a game plan here. The Yelena is a long range sniper rifle. Use it to scout out areas and pluck off those bio raid bastards before they even know you're there. Yeah, PSP was cool. Great library. Um, I guess not the right thing for the US market, but I had a lot of fun with my PSP. I, I w that was when I lived in Japan, so it was like the hottest gaming device over there. <laughs> Although, ironically, I did not like Monster Hunter until I left. And I, <laughs> it's funny. I resisted Monster Hunter so much because I thought it, I thought it looked really boring. And um, and it was it was it was like okay. I have a PSP, but I don't know anyone else who does. Uh, I didn't have a lot of friends in Japan who were gamers, so I uh, wasn't interested in taking on these giant forty-minute monster fights by myself, you know. But, uh... Then Portable 3rd HD came out when I worked at Capcom. Came out in Japan. And... That must have hurt. One of my coworkers hooked me up with a copy. And, uh... That was the first one that clicked with me. I liked being able to play... Because that you could use the, uh... Ad oh, shit. The ad hoc mode, if you remember. Oh god. Um, so that was like, I mean, Monster Hunter Try had online, but playing, trying to get online with the Wii, I remember it just feeling less than ideal. Oh, amount of bullets. <laughs> so good. I mean, I really like how the guns and arm work together in tandem. I gotta say. Oh, I missed that sniper. Back. Can't end like this. Too much of a bleeding heart to get into Monster Hunter. Oh yeah, like you mean morally it feels like you're doing something horrible. <laughs> My wife's that way. She takes she has a moral objection to the game. Why do you, let's see. Oh, uh, you, uh, so wait, if you weren't into Monster Hunter, what were you playing ad, uh, on Ad Hoc? I'm not reading any way out, but those walls are paper thin. Find something heavy and punch it through that wall. Are you giving me this? Sweet. Bingo. We're good.
I really like Peace Walker, the Metal Gear game. I've been longing to play that. I played that with a friend in Japan. And it was like one of the best multiplayer experiences ever. I had so much fun. And that was and I didn't totally understand it yet because I hadn't played Monster Hunter, and it takes like every idea <laughs> from Monster Hunter. <laughs> so I've always wanted to go back. I have the PS3 uh, port. And I guess the servers are still up for that, I don't know, but I would love to get a Peace Walker clan going. <laughs> I like the way they just float up <laughs> out of frame. <laughs> like, I have to go. My planet needs me. <laughs> God Eater. Ah. So that's like a little more morally acceptable. Even though you're eating God. But it's like, it's the wrong gods. Not that I, I mean, I'm not religious, but it's, it's just it's funny because the name is so, like, unapologetically blasphemous sounding. I was like, oh, that's not going to play well in the States. <laughs> but they changed it to uh, God's Eater, which I thought was hilarious. It's like, oh, if we're talking about evil pagan gods, that's okay. It's, it's exactly the train of thought <laughs> you'd expect here. I've always been curious about God Eater. It looks very cool, like the weapons that eat the things, eat the monsters. It's very compelling. But it was kind of the same thing. Like I don't, I didn't, I didn't know anyone who played it. I think I have Resurrection on the PS4. Is that what it's called? It's like the PS4 remake, or port, Ultimate Edition. Hey. Oops. You know, it's fine. The other one from Bandai Namco? Oh shit. Oh, you're talking about uh, Tolkien. That one looks even more like Monster Hunter. Yeah, there were a bunch of imitators to the point that in Japan, if you went to the game store, there would be a hunting action section. About what happened in Alaska. It was considered a genre. I don't have time for reminiscing. It's been five years. I was under orders. There was also um We're both soldiers. Soul Sacrifice don't on the Vita. Despite it being a concept game. That's why I had to let you I quite all. liked it. Soul Sacrifice was cool. Great presentation. Bingo. Joe, come in. I've located I feel like it was like it was like you know anyway? B grade gameplay off. with like an A grade presentation. Their landing was a that really sold thought. really There's sold the whole package, you know? Casualties of war. Unless you want to join them, keep moving and retrieve that black box. I think I remember the section. I 
I like having to pull the trigger as hard as I can to get it to register. It makes me feel like I'm... I don't know. I can feel the aggression in every trigger pull, you know. <laughs> It's funny because the pistol I can just pull the trigger like normal. Toki Den did look cool. Oh, you, you didn't think Soul Sacrifice looked good? I mean, I think it's it's a more casual experience. Uh, but we had fun with it. It has great. Well, I don't know about great. I remember the, like, monster designs being very cool. And just, like, the the overarching, like, premise. I, I thought it was pretty good. It seemed like high production value for the Vita, too. No love for Soul Sacrifice. There's also Freedom Wars, which was also, I thought, had a great presentation and, like, a cool premise that made the whole experience more compelling, where you're, like, uh, a prisoner and you're gradually earning more rights so that, you, like, it, when you start, you can't even, like, move or something or you're not allowed to, s like, sit down. or Like, I, you have to earn the right to do everything, and eventually it opens up and you can, like go outside your cell and like talk to people and go to the store and stuff and there's like a really well crafted uh environment yeah you've got like the long sentence hey dan rather see my my freedom wars my freedom wars buddy here that's one i'm surprised didn't get ported because the first party it was high production value it was good uh Nothing though. PSP battery's fine, but I got sad since it was next to my currently paperweight 3DS. <laughs> oh, that's a bummer. What am I trying to do here? Is there another hole in a building for me to get inside? Oh, here we go. Don't we? Oh wait, this is where I was. Crash recon plane. On another note, if I wanted to recycle my 3DS, what place would do that? Uh, there's like an e-waste, if you Google e-waste disposal, there's probably something like that in your area. Same with, uh, like, Im er, bulging batteries. I think you gotta disp oh shit. you gotta dispose of them in a special way. Which is why I haven't done it yet. Uh, <laughs> Am I crazy or is there no... Oh wait, there is a waypoint. I'm crazy. Don't believe it! Yeah, Google e-waste. Just check the Japanese PSN store. They do have Umihara Kawase Shun, which is the second game. You know, one of these days, I'm just gonna like drop a hundi, hundo, hundred, whatever the slang for a hundred is, I'm gonna drop that on a Japanese PSN card and just go to town on their archives. How much of this game is the floor is lava? Do you mean Umihara Kawase or Urbana Commando? Because they kind of both are. In this case, the lava is water. But wait, wh what am I missing? There's supposed to be, like, the waypoint disappeared. Didn't it? Oh no, it's over there. I don't know what it is about the waypoint in this game, but... I keep losing sight of it, even though it's there. Uh, this is the part I was thinking of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I get stuck here every time. 
just because I've, I'm like not looking in the right place. Yeah, the Japanese, P I mean, I don't think that the Japanese PSN store is better all around. I think that the archives are better, but there's like, I remember in Japan, like constantly being annoyed at how much less, I mean, granted this was like late 2000s, early, early 2010s, so things may have changed, but like, they didn't have a lot of the cool indie stuff. Um, it seemed like the U.S. store had way, way more overall to offer, and oh god, um, and more deals more frequently too. Both Bushido Blade games. Joe, come in. I've located the recon plane. What's left of it anyway? Rescue mission is off. What are you talking about? Their landing was a little rougher than you thought. There's I just, left I just uh, threw on Bushido Blade One the other day for the first time in like 20 years. Probably exactly 20 years actually, because I got that in 2000, just as I was starting to learn Japanese. We talked about this on the Vigi Game Apocalypse episode about samurai games, but uh, the first time that I was playing a Japanese game and I heard them say something in Japanese in the game and I looked it up in my new textbook that I bought because there was a glossary in the back of the textbook. And voila, I now knew what they said in the game. That experience was so gratifying. It's such a simple thing, but it was so gratifying to hear something and look it up, and then you now have that knowledge, and you know what they said. And <laughs> coincidentally, the word uh, was hajimete, which means for the first time. <laughs> so it was, it was my first time experiencing the power of you know what what learning a language can can mean for you in a practical sense especially if you're a big nerd rising zon yeah you're right i i think that was in my head cuz we talked about samurai western I do have some love for Rising Zon. I, I think that uh, they had a lot of cool ideas, and the humor is great. The humor feels like a precursor to God Hand in some ways, complete with a theme song with lyrics. But um, it's a little rough. But it, I also credit Rising Zon as the game that made me realize how much of a a desire I had for a game that let you combine uh, like melee and shooting in that way. Uh, and when Devil May Cry came along with all its polish, I was so ready, you know? And I think so were a lot of people. Because there were some games that had tried before. It was like Shadow Man, like to combine melee and shooting. Shadow Man, Fighting Force 2 tried it. And Rising Zon tried it. And mostly they were pretty rough. Rising Zon might be the best of the bunch. And then Devil May Cry, like they did it so well. Rising Zon is also on the Japanese PSN, isn't it?
Why is there radiation in here? They shouldn't put it in places that you're supposed to be. <laughs> no. It's probably the battery. Sorry about that. You guys got me wondering about this Umihara Kawase game, or series. There's some gems on the eShop, but they can get pretty buried. There's a lot of junk on there too. I love Attack of the Friday Monsters. It's just like a slice of life childhood simulator. from the My Summer Vacation team. Rising Zon, Samurai Gunman is on Japanese PSN. How, how much is it? 600 yen? They also got Haunting Ground, which is expensive as, sh as crap now Joe, I have the black box. in the U.S., but we didn't get it on PSN. Secretary Armstrong. We managed to get some coordinates from that black box, some kind of enemy staging base. Proceed to these coordinates and see what you can find. That place is hopping with those scumbags, so try not to get yourself killed. Uh, but Spencer, don't try to. What? No, I got something. Some kind of code. It's probably an access code used by BioRain called a matrix. That was so rude. Maybe you can open some of their locked doors now. Oops. Yeah, I like the shooting in this game. It's real lightweight. Yeah, Attack of the Friday Monster. It's just there's just something about it. It's like it's so heartwarming. Playing that little card game with everyone you meet. It's one of those games, it doesn't sound particularly compelling when you just describe it. It's just the feeling you get when you're there. And the, you know, the My Summer Vacation series is great too, but they, ne they didn't localize any of them. I guess they felt like this isn't, this is like a qu quintessentially Japanese summer experience that might not resonate, but I think that's... I think it resonates anyway. See what I can do. It's weird, like I get nostalgic for a thing I never lived, you know? <laughs> like that happened a lot to me in Japan. I think that there's a lot of nostalgia centric media in Japan. And um something heavy, say a car or your can be very like soothing. All right, what are we doing here? Some boring jerk. Can I can I use this robot for good despite its best intentions? Oh, these are like these are the PPP guys from uh, the original, aren't they? I see what they're doing here. Yeah, 
Give me it. Man, why are people being such dicks to me in this game? Oof, the trigger. Are these the PPP guys? Close enough. I'm <laughs> trying to do this with a janky controller. I'm out. Oh wait, can I can I get more? No. Ah, I see. There's like several at different locations. Do a cat and mouse game. That's cool. Shotgun. Music is cool. Oh, I did that wrong. Okay. I finally know how to use the damn thing. Yay. Better get moving before more polycraft arrive. Yeah, those are some wholesome games they got there. And I agree, the retro costume makes the whole game better. I'm not a big fan of the new design for Spencer. Oh, is this thing hackable now? Got it. Yeah, I mean, the, uh, I think they were trying to show off their dynamic hair physics. But... Uh, from a socio-political perspective, the dreads thing has not aged very well. And also, I just thought it looked kind of lame to begin with. And it was like, I don't know. It's like tank tops and pants. Nothing to write home about. I mean, a tank top and pants. Man. Swinging. Swinging just feels so good in this. And, you know, as good as it feels in the Spider-Man games, uh, it's, al it's so automatic. I think they they made it a little more skill based in the the latest one, but until that, you know, it kind of felt like you can basically do no wrong. Oh, I thought that was an exploding barrel. You telling me it's not. Uh, all right, let's just head over. Damn it. No, I don't, I mean, I don't think the haircut, well, I don't know. I thought it looked kind of... Like... Shit. I don't know what the word is. Silly? On him? I threw a grenade. I was trying to be fancy and like swing in and throw a grenade, but I, I was too close. Whoa. Did 
Damn it. That time it wasn't the grenade that killed me. I'm pretty sure. Okay, I'm gonna stop trying to do that though. Yeah, I thought it was I thought it was also boring. Have you heard anything about the intruders? What? More than one? Which was like <laughs> in line with them trying to make a like a modern western style shooter was have like a drab like muted design for the protagonist. Just like a grim dark angry guy and he said like Mike Patton's delivery often sounds like he's making fun of those characters but I can't tell sweet here radiation shotgun owns no aiming necessary <laughs> yeah, the NVIDIA signs really feel like they don't belong. Okay, the shotgun does some damage. Mm. Here we go. Hey! Uh, later, man. Thanks for tuning in again. Always appreciated. Oops. Says, consider changing my profile picture. You don't like the lacquerware? That's the lacquerware. I'm shocked. Does everyone else feel that way? You don't like the lacquerware? Should I make it feel more like a logo and less like I stole a stock photo off the internet? Everything's on schedule. You just concern yourself with 
Oh. Well, I have been meaning to change the icon in the upper left the record, of the actual the player. I'm not happy with the text. I mean, I'm open to feedback. I'm, I'm a pretty iffy graphic designer. And I didn't, I mean, the, the actual avatar, I didn't touch at all. It's just a photo. Um, but if anyone has, you know, I have a suggestion box, actually. But uh, if you uh, have any specific thoughts on what I could do with it, I'm all ears because I don't really know what to do with it. I wish I had done the dive animation there. Alright, have a good one. Great. Life, Just swinging Spencer. around. Put it out of your mind. You're almost there. Listen up. Some of those cave walls are incredibly thin. Put that arm of yours to you. See you on the next one. Ah, uh, yes, kiting. That's what separates us from the animals. Separates us physically, you know, you keep your distance. Um, whoa. Oh, shh. Shh, that's bad. Was there something I was supposed to be kiting? Need line from Nathan Rad Spencer. Ah, shh. 
There we go. Thought we were done for. You always assumed pants separated us from animals. I mean, have you ever seen a gator wearing pants? Not a gator. Actually, I think maybe I did recently on Twitter where I see everything. But I, <laughs> you know, you can put pants on a dog or a rat or a ferret. It's gotta be the kiting. Mag. She's working with them. I remember her. Good soldier. Don't be too hard on her. Nobody had it easy when the government shut Bionics down. You seem to be doing all right. I got five years hard time for just doing my job. <laughs> had you done your job, there wouldn't have been a problem. Do it this time. So keep moving. He's so bitter. He reminds me of me. I always hoped I'd grow up to be like Mike Patton, but not like this. Ah, we got some fancy friends. Find time for the gun to stop working. Whoa. Please dumb it down. Did not get your meaning. Whoa. Pretty fun to use. Damn it. No. But I was using my whole ass. Look alive. 
You have incoming polycraft. Spencer, I'll see if I can get you anything. In the meantime, keep moving. Everyone is so, like, weirdly, like, passive aggressive to each other in this game. Slash aggressive aggressive. That's a bulldog grenade launcher. Keep some distance between you and the target. That dog barks pretty loud if you catch my drift. Good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, the grenade launcher, he does like the little Terminator flip. Yeah, there's lots of cool little touches in this game, you know, it's not... think that please don't crash thank you yeah I don't know I, I feel like this age the game has kind of aged well in some in some respects the flaws uh, ha like were apparent even in the game's own time but like the good the things that are good about this game I feel like have just like they just shine brighter with age for some reason I guess because this kind of game is no longer like the only kind of game people make so it feels a little more special now uh, that's definitely radiation crap uh, I'm trying to be there. Oh, there. this stuttering keeping me on edge There we go. No. Nope. 
Oh, shit. 